Do you want to taste the pudding instead of putting your feet in it? No. Hi, I'm Samantha Sundaratna. I'm a cookbook author and a food stylist. Today I'm going to show you how to make the easiest, most delicious chocolate cardamom pudding. You can make it on a weeknight, and then I'm going to show you how to transform that pudding into a really beautiful chocolate cardamom cream tart with fluffy whipped cream and a brittle. Let's get started. I say this all the time, but you have to cook. We all have to cook and eat to survive but pastry and dessert is basically just for the fun of it. It's just for pleasure and to make people happy. I love, love, love chocolate pudding. And homemade chocolate pudding is just that much more delicious. I just really dig chocolate and cardamom together. My family is from Sri Lanka, so we use a lot of cardamom in our cooking. My mom uses it in her curries and things, so I like to use it in my baked goods. So the first thing we're gonna do is just steep our milk with some cardamom pods to infuse the milk with that beautiful flavor. So I have my green cardamom pods in my mortar and pestle. I'm just gonna smash them and get those delicious seeds out. So now this just has to come up to a boil. I think this is a really typical dish for me. I love classic American treats. I grew up in Connecticut, but then it has a little bit of a spin, a little bit of a ethnic twist, thanks to my parents with the cardamom. We're gonna let this sit for an hour so that the cardamom pods can steep in the milk and impart their flavor to the milk, and then we'll make the rest of our custard. So in this bowl, I have all my egg yolks, and then I'm gonna put my cornstarch directly into the egg yolk mixture and my sugar. I'm using bittersweet, a mix of bittersweet and milk chocolate, and both of those have sugar in them, so I'm trying not to make the whole thing too sweet. And then, in this bowl, I have all my chocolate broken up into smaller pieces, and we'll set a sieve right on top of the chocolate so we can pour our custard in. So here's my milk that was steeping with the cardamom pods. First thing I'm gonna do is add heavy cream. This is not a light dessert, necessarily and then my egg yolk mixture. I don't wanna lose any of that egg yolk and sugar mixture that's in my bowl, so I'm gonna do this very messy but useful tip, try to scrape away all the last bits of the egg yolk, and then put it back in. I like to have a spatula handy and a whisk. The spatula sort of to make sure nothing is getting stuck to the bottom or in the corner, you know, but the whisk we'll need in a second to sort of smooth it out again. And all we're trying to do here is bring this up to a very low boil to cook out some of that cornstarch and to get the egg yolks to thicken their pudding. But we don't want to blast it. We don't want to boil it with excessive heat because that could lead to a big pot of scrambled eggs. And this is the most soothing job in the kitchen, if you ask me. This is how like the base of so many good desserts is, is custard. If you're not a fan of cardamom, you could certainly use a different spice. Throw a couple cinnamon sticks in here. That would be terrific. Cinnamon and chocolate go really, really well together. You could even add a little bit of spice and make it sort of a Mexican chocolate-inspired pudding. It's getting like little lumps. So before those get too tight, I'm gonna sort of work them out with a whisk. But we're gonna strain this mixture. I mean, you don't wanna overcook it, but don't be too scared of lumps, it's okay. It happens so quickly. Look at that, now it's custard. You can see it starting right there. It's a little tricky at this point because you don't want your yolks to cook, overcook, but you want to make sure it doesn't taste like cornstarch in the end. So now we'll take her off the stove immediately and we'll pour her through the sieve into the melted chocolate and that sieve will catch the cardamom pods and any pieces of egg white that might have made it to the custard. And it's nice and hot, so it'll melt the chocolate. Stir in the chocolate a little bit. Pudding! I'm gonna add a little bit of vanilla extract to this. I never measure vanilla extract. And this is ready to go. So that's all it takes to make this super decadent, delicious, creamy chocolate pudding. At this point, you wanna just cover them with a little plastic wrap, get them into the fridge, let them chill out for about an hour or two. You could certainly serve them plain or you could top them with a little bit of whipped cream. Creme fraiche would be really good or sour cream would even be good just for a little sweet and tart thing. While my pudding is chilling, I can get started on my pastry dough. I always make my pastry dough in the food processor. 
You can certainly do it by hand with a pastry blender. I just love the food processor. It takes two seconds. The butter never gets warm because you're not touching it. Into my food processor is my flour, all-purpose flour, a little bit of sugar, of course, always, a little bit of salt, Pick that up, and then a stick of cold butter. I've just cut it up into little pieces. We're looking to keep chunks of butter in our pastry dough because those are gonna be what make our pastry dough nice and flaky and tender. And I have my ice water, and it is truly ice water because you want the water to be nice and cold so that your butter doesn't melt. And we're gonna use about three to four tablespoons of ice water. I'm gonna start with three and then I'll take a look. You want it to hold together in your hand so you can see this is a little bit too dry still. So we'll add one more tablespoon. And now it's starting to come together. Before it becomes one mass, I'm just gonna check it. Look at that, perfect. And then just knock it into the plastic. And then you can use the sides of the plastic to sort of smoosh it together into a disc. You can see those little pieces of butter that are still whole in my dough. So now this goes into the fridge for at least an hour, but you know, you could do it up to three days in advance. You could also throw it in the freezer for up to a month. Here's our pastry, it's been chilled. It's time to roll it out. I always just, I do this. I don't know if it does anything, but it just feels good. It's a little cold. Still, you can see it's cracking. If it were the perfect temperature, it wouldn't do those cracks, but I'm impatient. I like to rotate my dough as I roll it out so that I can make sure that it is not sticking. I also never run my pin all the way over the edge because that's basically how you create these thin, thin edges, which is not what you want. You want it to be nice and uniform. And the faster you do this, the better. If at any point your house is hot and you need to throw it back into the fridge, do it. I like to fold my dough in half, move my tart pan close, and then lay it in half, and then fold, just like that. You don't need to butter your pan because there's a lot of butter in your pastry. And as long as you cook your pastry thoroughly, it should pop right out. And I like to knock the edges over and then run my pin right over to trim it. So now this I'm gonna chill for a little bit, maybe 10 minutes in the freezer before I blind bake it. My tart shell is nice and cold. I'm scrumping up, scrumping? That's not a word. Crunching? What am I doing? Crunching of a piece of parchment paper. And then I'm gonna lay it on the inside. Crumpling it up like that just makes it a little bit easier to get into all the nooks and crannies of the tart shell. And then I'm gonna fill that with pie weights. See, my pie weights are a mixture of ceramic beads, beans, and old rice. Use whatever you've got on hand. You really want to fill it up because the point of this is to cook our pie shell before we add any custard. It's also to keep it nice and flat. So we're going to put it in a 375 degree oven probably for about 20-25 minutes until it sets. Then we'll remove the beans and cook it completely. So another 20-25 minutes, give or take. Keep an eye on it. My number one will always be young, old, whatever, a warm chocolate chip cookie. I don't think there's anything better in the world than a warm chocolate chip cookie that you just made that comes out of the oven hot and gooey. I also really, really, really loved when I was little box brownies, and I still kind of love them now. Like, I don't make brownies from scratch because I think the ones from the box are better. Chocolate eclairs. My mom and I made them together after a trip to Paris, and that was like one of the first things I learned how to make and really still love them deeply. Pudding Pops, did anybody else love those? I loved those when I was little. I can't believe they don't sell them anymore. I'm gonna have to just make them. You know those like orange sherbet push-up pops? And I got those from the ice cream man. I wonder if they still have those. But it's all like delicious processed American junk food. So here is my blind baked pastry shell. You know when a pastry shell is baked properly if you can lift it out. And look how beautiful and brown that crust is. 
now we can get our custard into our pie shell. It's really important to cook your pastry dough completely so that it's nice and crisp. The custard, of course, is gonna soften the pastries. This is my favorite tool in the kitchen. I have a lot of them. <laughs> They're worth their weight in gold. And now this can go back in the fridge to firm up before we top it. Now we can make our brittle. Pistachio and cardamom is a really common, very classic pairing. And the sesame seeds I just thought would add like a nice little bitterness. And I happen to have a ton of sesame seeds. So in my pot, I have two tablespoons of water. I always put that in first and then put the sugar into the center so that it gets evenly moistened without me having to stir it. I think the key to making caramel is to just let it do its thing. I'm not even gonna stir it until it starts to get colored. Once you start making caramel, you really can't walk away. As soon as it starts to get colored, it moves pretty fast. And it goes from being perfect to being burnt like that. <laughs> so have all your ingredients at the ready and don't go anywhere. And don't touch this. <laughs> I made a lot of crumb caramel when I was little and it was so hard not to taste this mixture. I desperately wanted to. I probably burned myself five times before I stopped doing that. <laughs> Ow. It's going to continue to cook even after we take it off the heat. So I'm gonna throw my pistachios and my sesame seeds right in and a nice little bit of salt. Stir that together, cover them in the sugar mixture. And then we have here a silicon baking mat on a baking sheet. You could also just use a piece of parchment that you've greased really, really, really well. There we go, we'll spread this out so that it can cool completely. When it's hard and completely cool, we can chop it up and sprinkle it on our tart. Now we're gonna make the whipped cream to top our tart. It's a cup of heavy cream, a tablespoon of confectioner's sugar, roughly, inner cardamom seeds, and I love them. So you don't have to worry about the pods. And I think that freshly ground cardamom is so much more delicious than the pre-ground stuff. I'll put a little in my cream, and I'm just gonna whip it. A little bit soft. Now we can assemble our tart. We have my brittle, which is completely cool. I actually like it cut sort of small because I think the pieces are sort of nicer in your mouth if they're not too big and too hard. Of course, if you just want to eat this, you certainly could. Well, you have like bittersweet from the sugar from the caramel. I think that pistachios and sesame are a little bit savory, and I hit it with a good dose of salt, so. It's also salty and it's gonna be crunchy, which is really nice in contrast with that smooth, rich custard. And now, just put cream on our tart. I like to do, use a big spoon to sort of put big textured dollops on top. And I always leave a little bit of a border so that you can see some of the chocolate underneath the cream so people sort of know what they're getting into. They can get excited. Sprinkle this beautiful stuff all over. How good does that look? Our pudding is chilled and ready. Our tart is assembled. So now it's time to taste everything. So now I'm gonna try my chocolate pudding. Mm. It's super smooth. It's very luscious. It's sort of a cross between a chocolate pudding and like a chocolate mousse, I think, because it's that rich. Let's cut this bad boy. Everything's still crisp, which makes me happy. That worked. I mean, it's like chocolate cream pie, but even more interesting because you have this beautiful crispy base, smooth custard, then this cardamom and the cream and the chocolate, so nice together. And then more crunch and more savory notes from the pistachios and the sesame. I think it goes together beautifully. And there's lots of textures, which I really like. One day, when it's safe to hang out with our friends again, you can make them this tart. 
Thank you so much for watching this episode of Chefs at Home. Be sure to let us know what you're going to make in the comments below and like and subscribe to Food and Wine's YouTube channel. I'm Samantha Sinavaratna. You can find me on Instagram at Samantha Sinavaratna or check out my latest book, The Joys of Baking. And if you make anything, let me know.